the domain of y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared is the set of all x values that we can plug into the function. To figure out what that is, we must consider the operations in the function and which of those operations have restrictions. For example, subtraction is in this function. You can subtract any two numbers you like, so there are no restrictions there. There's also a number being squared. You can square whatever you like, so there's no restrictions there, but there's also a square root. We can't take the square root of a negative, so that imposes a restriction. What's inside the square root has to be non-negative. So to find the domain, we know that nine minus x squared, since it's in the square root, cannot be negative, which means it must be greater than or equal to zero. We can then solve for x. Add x to both sides, and we find that x squared is less than or equal to 9. Again, that's just adding x squared to both sides. We get that 9 is at least x squared, which of course is the same as this. Now, if x squared is less than or equal to 9, that means x has to be less than or equal to 3. If it's any bigger than 3, then its square would be bigger than 9 but x also has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. If it was any less than negative 3, like negative 4, for example, then its square would be greater than 9, and so again would violate our restrictions. And that's how to find the domain. We consider the restrictions of the function and solve that restriction for x. Now to find the range, we must ask what are the possible y values that we could get from this function. It's very easy to answer that question if you happen to know what this function looks like. If you square both sides, you get y squared equals 9 minus x squared, and then adding x squared to both sides, we get x squared plus y squared equals 9, and this is the equation of a circle with radius 3. However, this function that we have is not this entire circle. The square root function only outputs positives. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a function if it output positives and negatives. It only outputs positives. That means the bottom half of this circle, where y is negative, is not actually part of the graph of this equation. So we would erase that bottom half of the circle. Hence, this is actually the equation of a semicircle with a radius of three. And so the range, the possible y values, is everything less than or equal to three and greater than or equal to zero. All of these y values here. Now, if you didn't know that this was the equation of a circle, you'd have to think a little bit harder. We'd have to ask, what's the smallest the inside of this square root can be? the smallest that 9 minus x squared can be. Well, the smallest 9 minus x squared can be is 0. When x equals 3, it takes on a value of 0. So the smallest that the function could be is the square root of 0, which of course is 0. We would then ask, what's the biggest 9 minus x squared can be? The biggest 9 minus x squared can be is when x is minimum. Again, since x squared is being subtracted from 9, the smaller x is, the less we're subtracting from 9, and thus the bigger the y value will be. Now, the least we could subtract from 9 would be 0. So this is less than or equal to 9. When x equals 0, it takes on its maximum value of 9, but our function would take on its maximum value of root nine, which is three, that upper bound. That's how to find the domain and range of this function. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my pre-calculus course and pre-calculus exercises playlist in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count with calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need